Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and today we are going to talk about five things you need to do before early access drops for Coral Island. I know for those of you who have been waiting for what feels like a whole eternity to play this game, it may still seem like the October 11th release date is far away. But trust me when I say the next three weeks are going to fly by and when the game drops, you want to be ready. So the first thing you're going to need to do is figure out whether or not you can actually play the game. Coral Island will be releasing into early access on Steam and for PC Game Pass, so it will be limited to PC players. If you do have a PC and are uncertain about whether or not it will be able to handle the game, here are the minimum and recommended PC requirements according to the Steam page. If everything looks good and your PC meets these specs, you also want to make sure that you have at least 8 gigabytes of storage space available to download the game. I think it's also worth noting here that the game will have controller support, so even though it's on PC, you don't have to play keyboard and mouse. Number two. If you are able to play Coral Island, you also need to decide if you actually want to. I know, the obvious answer may seem to be, uh, yeah, Sarah, of course I want to play. But there are a few things you should consider before playing just to manage expectations. Since this is an early access title, the game will be incomplete and it will most likely, if not most definitely, have some bugs. I personally personally have absolutely zero problems with encountering bugs, glitches, crashes, and more in an early access experience. Because the whole point of it is to help shape the game as a community. It's actually a really amazing opportunity because since the game is still in development, you may actually be able to influence the final product and potentially see some of your own ideas being implemented. But if bugs are going to frustrate you, you might want to wait a little while until the game receives the first few updates at least, or maybe even until the complete product is released. In terms of the incomplete nature of the game, again, I personally don't mind at all because I love to appreciate small things along the way. This applies not only to how I live in real life, but also within the games I play. This may be an unpopular opinion, but I actually really valued how Animal Crossing New Horizons released with only the basics available before slowly adding features over time because for me it led to a longer term enjoyment of the game in which I appreciate appreciated every little moment and mechanic. So appreciating Coral Island for what it is in early access and then gradually getting exciting content updates along the way really appeals to me and the person I am. But if it doesn't appeal to you and you're hoping to settle down in the Merfolk Kingdom and go island hopping on day one, you're definitely going to want to wait for the full release of the game. So if you can play it and you decided you're going to, the third thing you need to decide is how you're going to purchase the game. We don't yet have a confirmed price for Coral Island, but estimates range from around 20 US dollars to 30 US dollars. And if you were uncertain about whether or not you wanted to play the game in early access, you might still want to at least purchase it. First of all, it will support the title on launch and help the game gain more exposure, but also you only need to purchase the game once. So if you purchase early on, your game will receive all future updates for free until the game reaches its final product. Otherwise, the price will be incrementally increased as content is added. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, there will be three ways you can purchase early access if you haven't already via Kickstarter. So let's take a look at the options and the pros and cons of each. The first option is to purchase the game directly through Steam. This one is pretty straightforward. A big pro of this option is that the purchases will help boost the game in Steam's algorithms, but the con is that the developers will receive a smaller portion of the purchase in comparison with option number three, which we will get to. The second option is to subscribe to PC Game Pass, or if you already have a subscription, then you're all set to go. A pro for this option is that when you sign up, your first month costs only $1, but a big con is that you will be paying a recurring fee every month of about 
10 to $12, depending on your currency. So essentially you are renting Coral Island and not owning it. My opinion is that if accessing many titles in the Game Pass library appeals to you, then this might be something you'd like to consider. But otherwise I would recommend just outright purchasing Coral Island so that you can own it. The third and final option is the one that I personally will be choosing. And this is to purchase Coral Island through the Humble Games store. By purchasing it this way, you will still receive a Steam key. However, the developers will receive a larger percentage of the sale than if you buy it direct on Steam. I also personally just really appreciate the values that Humble Games has as a company and would like to support them as well. Everything they sell, including their massive bundle deals, gives a share to different charities. So this will be my personal pick, but there are definitely pros and cons to every single option. And all of the options will benefit Stairway Games and Coral Island in a variety of different ways. So really at the end of the day, you just have to pick what is best for you. Number four, on the list of things you must do before early access comes out. And this is a really important one, you guys, okay? If you're like me and you often have a really, and I mean really long list of games you wanna play, I would highly recommend doing your best to play them before October 11th, or you might not be playing them at all. I'd suggest making a priority list for the games you really wanna check out and actually schedule in play times whenever you can to make sure you actually get to them, enjoy them, and appreciate them. Because I can almost promise you, for most of you at least, that the odds of you coming back to those titles after Coral Island is born into the world, well, <laughs> those odds are probably quite slim. Also, since we're only three weeks out, if you've played almost everything you've wanted to by this point, I would highly recommend diving into some farm sims if you have time to set the tone and get in the rhythm of the genre's mechanics. Some of my recommendations would be, of course, Stardew Valley, Dorymon Story of Seasons, and no surprise here, Disney Dreamlight Valley. Playing Dreamlight Valley on stream with you lately has definitely hit the spot for me as we wait for Coral Island and honestly gets me even more hype for early access. And the final thing I think you need to do before Coral Island releases is brush up on your Coral Island knowledge. Now, I don't mean go study every little detail and commit yourself to being a student of the island, but I do mean reviewing character bios so you have a good idea of who you might want to prioritize in getting to know, what you might want to save in your pocket instead of selling, because because that item might come in handy as a gift for your favorite character. Maybe you want to refresh on the basic island lore before you step foot onto the island. Maybe you want to remind yourself of the services being offered around town and the general areas in which you may be able to find them. Little things like this so you are not only prepared but also immersed in the world the moment you press play. Now, I'm pretty confident that I've covered basically everything there is to know about Coral Island over the past year plus. So I will humbly say that objectively, I think my videos would honestly be the best place to go for this information. I've done all the work for you of grabbing details from hundreds of different resources, places, and people, and putting them all together in neatly packaged videos, accompanied by visuals. There's a ton of information scattered throughout every single one of my videos, sometimes totally unexpected details, which you could completely binge through, or you can select the topics you're most interested in and maybe remind yourself of some of the things you forgot about over the past year. And an honorable mention, which is actually very important, you guys, okay, is to turn your notifications for the channel on to make sure you don't miss an upload or a future stream from me. Just as a reminder, I will be streaming Coral Island's early access two whole days before it launches on October 9th at midnight UTC, which for me is actually October 8th at 5 o'clock p.m. PST. Look at us time traveling. How fun. <laughs> so I definitely hope to see you there. So those are the five things I think you need to do before Coral Island releases into early access on October 11th. But let me know if there's anything I missed. And now it's time for your top comments. 
So because I actually haven't done this segment in a little while, I am gonna pull comments from a few different videos. So the first top comment is from Cornelia, who said they're a bit jealous for those who will play on PC with the early access, and that they hope they will give a release date soon for consoles, but also looking forward to the Coral Island stream. So first of all, thank you so much. And second of all, I completely empathize with you. I'm definitely more of a console gamer versus a PC gamer, but I did purchase the entire PC setup so I could make videos and cover Coral Island and play it. So I'm that level of crazy, <laughs> but I don't regret a single thing. So I know a lot of people are really waiting for the Switch release of this game. Uh, that's, I think, the top most anticipated version. And I'm so excited for that too. I mean, Coral Island handheld mode, are you kidding me? Um, we have no idea when those versions are going to come out. I'm personally speculating that it'll be about a year from now, but we know they are already working on the console ports. So it could be sooner depending how everything goes in development, depending how much more they add to the game because this game is huge you guys there's gonna be so much to do in it and just depending how early access goes as a whole like there's so many factors to consider here so even if they did give a release date that could change at any time with how fluid the process is but of course i hope you know by now that the moment we know anything new, I will be covering it and making sure you all know just as soon as I do. So don't go anywhere. I got you guys and I'm still going to try to make lots of content that you guys will love even if you're not playing the game. I got you. I also pulled a couple top comments from the Coral Island original soundtrack I shared on the channel. This is actually a really good way to get in the mood for the game. If you listen to it through, it has the main theme and the four seasonal themes for spring, summer, fall, and winter. And I've honestly been listening to this on a loop while I work, while I relax, before bed. Like, I'm just getting in the zone. The music makes me so happy. So I definitely recommend you check that out if you haven't already. The first top comment here is from Zoe, who says that they love the main theme so much and how well it fits with the overall theme of Coral Island. Bright and cheerful, but full of mysteries. And it also gives off an ocean vibe, which makes total sense. So I did ask which of the tracks was your favorite on that video. And if you haven't shared that already, definitely go ahead and leave that in the comments on that video and add to the conversation. A really interesting comment that I wanted to share from Cleo the Muse said that it reminds them of their music lessons they had in high school about Indonesian gamelan music. They shared that they actually have a different tone system that is more distinct, actual tones that Europeans didn't previously know existed, and that the Coral Island soundtrack is definitely inspired by the traditional sound, but tonally fits into the Western tone system. And I just thought this was so incredibly interesting. I did know the soundtrack was inspired for sure by a traditional Indonesian sound, but the whole tonal differences was just so interesting to me. So I definitely want to share this with all of you. And the final top comment is from Waffle Rider, who said so many incredibly sweet and kind things about my content creation. So thank you so, so much. But what I actually wanted to highlight about this comment was that they noted just how much they love that Stairway Games infuses a care and love for the environment into their game to hopefully create more awareness for being kind to the world around us. So I just thought that was such a sweet message. So thank you so much Waffle Writer for infusing the comment section with this beautiful message. And that goes for all of you. Thank you all so much for your kind, sweet, thoughtful comments you always leave. I truly appreciate it and I always look forward to hearing from you. Be sure to leave your thoughts down below on this video and maybe you'll be featured in one of my next. And before I leave you today, let's take a look at today's amazing fan art. So today's amazing fan art is a super fun piece by Nathan who created this cute and cartoony illustration of Sus Chicken taking a nap. I had to share it. We know we love Sus Chicken on the channel. Everything Sus Chicken. I'm always ready for it. So I definitely love this one so much. Uh, of course, as always, I will link Nathan's information in the description of this video. Be sure to show him some love in the comments below and thank you so, so much, Nathan, for sharing your amazing art with us. Well, there you have it, friends. Those were five things I think you need to do before Coral Island releases into early access on October 11th, which is literally just around the corner, okay? It's gonna come up so fast. We're all gonna blink and it's gonna suddenly be the day. So don't even worry, time is gonna fly. And until then, of course, as always, I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. And until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Mandy, 
Meredith, Formotis, Samor, Tansy, and Cisco, my Sunstone members. I love you all and thank you so, so much for your support. It really helps to make all of this possible and means the world to me. 